I think that for our fandom of the brands that we have that include brands like Pokemon and AEW and Halo and Star Wars uh, and so many more, Hello Kitty, like, for these brands, uh, it is going to be... Welcome back, Micro Galaxians. We had a little bit of a dry spell there, but we are back and we have a lot to talk about today. So you know when you get that feeling of, I should probably go to the store or I should probably do said thing. Well, I had that feeling, so I went to Walmart right when I got off of work and I had some Series 5 Micro Galaxy Squadron waiting for me, one of which was a rare chase variant. So I couldn't be more excited. We have Series 5 to talk about and some Jazzwares Vault news. So without further ado, let's get started. All right, let me show you the haul. Starting off, we have Pose X-Wing. I believe this is the Rise of Skywalker variant, so it's all orange and blue. And then the chase that I found is going to be the Shadow V-Wing Starfighter, one out of 15,000. I couldn't have been more excited to have found these. Now, if you've been keeping tabs with me or a bunch of the community members in the Facebook groups, then you've seen that these have been popping in and out of stock on Amazon. I'll post all those links in the description. It's been very sporadic, so you really have to stay on top of it. They tend to go live again like 9 a.m. Pacific Standard Time and sometimes like noon. It's just very random. But at least you know now these are hitting Walmart stores. And from what I'm hearing, these are also hitting Target stores as well. Per usual, we have some more ships on the back of the packaging. So we have Pose X-Wing, a first order TIE fighter, the B-Wing, and then our chase variants. I am a little conflicted on the chase selection. I love the X-Wing. It's gonna be my goal to collect every different variant of the X-Wing. So seeing this being one out of 5,000, it makes me a little sad, but this is still pretty early in the Series 5 game. So I have hope that I can find one. But regardless, I'm still very grateful that I found any type of chase vehicle. And this will be another Another great addition to the collection and I'll show you some close-ups here in a little bit because first we're going to talk about Poe's T-70 X-Wing from the Rise of Skywalker. This is now our ninth X-Wing in Micro Galaxy Squadron. I feel like there is no shortage of pilots for X-Wings. I mean I can even see them doing Rey flying Luke Skywalker's X-Wing as a chase variant and I'd be perfectly okay with that and I would most likely try to hunt that down. Which, in my opinion, this is a very solid lineup of ships. Even the chase vehicles. I mean, you have Kit Fisto, Starfighter. We have Darth Vader, Sith Interceptor. That thing looks sweet. I am glad that one is 1 out of 15,000 and not 1 out of 5,000. Because if you look closely, you can see that the window of the cockpit has like a reddish hue to it and I think that looks awesome. Even all the way down to the blind boxes there is a great variety here. Even Boba Fett riding that little speeder bike like we saw within the book of Boba Fett. I mean that's just such a classic little scene. And then the Shadow Scout Trooper. That is one I'll definitely be hunting for. As far as figures go we have of course Poe and R2-D2. Per usual here is the barcode to help you track this down in store. This has not been showing up on the Target app just yet but this barcode will work in store, so show this to your nearest Target employee. It should populate any stock that they have. Here it is out of the packaging, another beautiful X-Wing to the collection. There is nothing new or unusual about this sculpt. It's going to be the exact same thing that we saw within the black one. Again, he does come with R2-D2, which we see within the film. It's crazy to think about, actually. R2-D2 has seen some stuff. I mean, if droids could talk, I would want to be in the room hearing the stories that R2-D2 has. I mean, all the way from young Annie in the Naboo Starfighter, Anakin as an adult, Luke Skywalker, and now riding with Poe Dameron, I mean, that is quite the resume, let me tell you. When it comes to both Poe Dameron's, there's nothing strikingly different about him. Paint applications and the sculpting does look the same. Here is BB-8 also for comparison. But when it comes to our R2-D2s, there is a noticeable difference as far as paint applications go between our Series 1 and our Series 5. That big difference can be seen here at the top of the dome. To our left, we have our Series 5 a lot cleaner, a lot more refined. And then to our right, we have our Series 1 where it looks like just one big dot. Putting these figures within the ship is pretty self-explanatory. R2-D2 sits on that little peg, and they made this cutout big enough for not only R2, but BB-8 as well. So we'll just pop him on there, and he fits in just like so, nice and snug. No risk of him falling out whatsoever. What's great is he does have an ejector button here, so if you're having some trouble trying to pull him out, you just push that little button, and he'll pop right on out. 
Of course, we'll do the exact same thing with BB-8. He does have a notch at his bottom, which should help him rest on that bar back there. But when you put him in, he stays pretty snug as it is. I mean, I don't really have any issues with him falling out. But what I do like about it is I can have him looking from left to right and all different directions, which is actually pretty cool. And since he sticks out so much, you don't really have a need for the ejector button for him. Like the rest of the figures, Poe has two points of articulation. He can move his arms upwards and can also go in a seated position. This cockpit hatch is on a hinge. You can lift it up just like so. You can see the inside has some awesome sculpting and detail. Man, it feels great to hold a new series of Micro Galaxy Squadron. So we can pop him on in just like so. Close that baby up and you can still kind of see him through that window of the cockpit. The overall sculpt to this baby looks great. It doesn't have a whole lot of black wash to it. I would say barely anything at all, which again, isn't really a big issue in my book. I could just apply one later, but I do love this vehicle so much. It has a minimal amount of screws. It has some landing gear at the bottom. And of course it wouldn't be an X-Wing if you couldn't open up those wings. I mean, how could you not love this ship? It's just a beautiful piece. The sculpting looks fantastic. You can even see on the inside of the wings, there's some more detail there. They sculpted a few more components and that just really ties this ship in together. Despite what people think of the sequels, I think Poe Dameron is a great character. The highlights for me within those three films has gotta be all the dogfights. I mean, they did some fantastic action sequences i mean even with the millennium falcon in the force awakens going through the canyons and the dunes and the beaten down ships amazing scenes and then just seeing what poe was able to do with an x-wing i mean going from a complete u-turn at full speed just crazy things and like all the camera angles and the way they are approaching things and then like when one wing flies off the TIE fighter and it does that vroom, 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 vroom going down, those were definitely some redeeming factors for the sequels. Now, if you didn't want to display your X-Wing in flight mode, you can close up the wings and there is some landing gear on the underside. So we have three points, two underneath the engines and one at the nose of the ship. They've always done a fantastic job with the landing gear. It usually stays flush underneath the ship. There is a little tab, you just pop them open just like so. Let's do a quick comparison of some of my other X-Wings. I have three loose in total, and then I have two more sealed, which are chases. To accompany the orange X-Wing, I have Poe's black one, and then I have Luke Skywalker's X-Wing. And for my chases, I have Antok Merrick's X-Wing, one out of 5,000. This one was gifted to me by Jazzwares. It's actually probably my favorite X-Wing because it was first of all gifted, and then second, I just really like Antok Merrick. I love Rogue One. And the overall color scheme to his ship looks cool too. And my last one is Jedi Luke Skywalker's X-Wing. So this is gonna be the exact same ship from series one, except this one is a little bit dirtier with some different paint applications. And then we have Jedi Luke. This one I actually found in store and I freaked out. I was so happy. I think it was the first chase I ever found. For that reason, these will obviously stay sealed and proudly displayed in my collection. Now let's talk about the Shadow V-Wing Starfighter, a one out of 15,000 chase variant. The packaging to this one is very mint and clean, so I will be keeping it sealed. I typically like to keep all my chase variants sealed. Unless this packaging was destroyed, then I would open it, but this one looks great. There isn't a big difference between this one and the standard. The sculpting is gonna be the same. The obvious difference is gonna be that black trim, and that looks so menacing. I love the way this looks. Then as far as figures go, we have an Imperial Pilot, and that looks to be the same astromech that we have with the original v-wing there's nothing crazy different to the back of the packaging it's pretty much the same old stuff we've been seeing even though these barcodes lead to an assortment here it is just in case since I'm not taking this baby out of the packaging, here is the best you're gonna get as far as comparisons. You can see the biggest difference is gonna be the color scheme between both ships. And then figure-wise, they are the exact same sculpts. Astromechs are the same paint apps. The pilots are different. The Shadow Starfighter has that black jumpsuit, looks really great, and a little bit of a darker orange visor, which is super fitting for this pilot. Now let's talk Jazzwares Vault news. If you've been keeping tabs with me or Jazzwares, then you saw that they released a lot of information just this week alone. In fact, just the past few days. So the official launch for the Vault is gonna be next Wednesday, 327 at 9 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. They have already teased us with a number of toys that are gonna be released at launch. We have two offerings from Micro Galaxy Squadron. One of them is like a big AT-AT pack, comes with two snow speeders, two speeder bikes, and like a bunch of different figures. And of course, the walker itself. 
We also have a complete Series 3 Scout class. It comes with an amazing box. All the figures are lined up. It looks beautiful. We have an AEW figure, a Fortnite figure, and a new deco for the Call of Duty Ghost. Check out these highlights of Jeremy's interview with Comic Book announcing the vault. But the Jazzwares Vault is an online destination for collectors to get exclusive, cool toys, uh, and more. Uh, with right. monthly drops and one-of-a-kind offerings. Um, it's going to be a very immerse, direct-to-consumer uh, ecosystem and program that we're developing. Mm -hmm. So I think that for our fandom of the brands that we have that include brands like Pokemon and AEW and Halo and Star Wars uh, and so many more, Hello Kitty, like for these brands, uh, it is going to be a cornucopia of fun, good times, wonderful things and uh, we're going to delight our fans that's for sure that some of these games are the biggest revenue drivers of all time yep. um interestingly enough the the number one and number two largest revenue drivers of all time are pokemon and hello kitty um and you'll be seeing those on the vault as well uh, brands like aew and brands like halo and and call of duty and and some of these other critical brands that we have we're it just it's just going to be a lot of fun we want to have fun we're toy people we know that our that that the fans of these brands um, want to also have fun, so just expect that. Just yeah. expect that, and we're going to do it. Sometimes we'll announce what we're doing ahead of time, and other times just wake up and and bam, it's, it's going to be right there. I love it. Get ready, get excited. It's all finally happening. I'll post a link to the Jazzwares Vault. Make sure you sign up for their email and then create an account if you can. Put all your information in there so you're ready to rock because all these offerings are going to be limited. Some as small as 3,000. But guess what? That's not all. Jazzwares also announced the new ATTE and the Ghost, which is on display at the New York Empire State Building, which is pretty fitting, the Empire State Building. But there is a booth dedicated to Micro Galaxy Squadron and they're all on display and man these new offerings look great. That is it everyone. I hope you enjoyed this unboxing review and information dump on the new Jazzwares Vault. I'm excited to see what is in store for us especially when it comes to Halo and Pokemon. When it comes to my final thoughts on Poe's X-Wing I think it's another great piece. If you like the previous X-Wings then you're gonna like this one as well. Be sure to connect with me on Instagram and TikTok to stay up to date when new things drop like Micro Galaxy Squadron and the new Jazzwares Vault. I also post toy photography and toy videos. If you did enjoy this unboxing review and information dump, then be sure to like and subscribe. It helps out the channel and it lets me know I'm doing a good job. Until then, collectors, I'll see y'all in the next video.